Um, so what we'd like to do, this might take about 15 minutes, is just go person by person, share your name, uh, maybe how long you've lived in the neighborhood, if you're comfortable, and then whereabouts in the neighborhood you are. Um, and I can go first, and then we can just kind of snake around. And that's, that's um, so again, Adrian Wren, um, president of the Oak Park Neighborhood Association, lived here for almost nine years uh, on a current down 4th Avenue. My name is Elizabeth, and I spent most of my life in Oak Park, and I did not get to this. I'm on. Thank you. I've been here forever. <laughs>
Dr. Wilbur, for a while. Now I've got the rental there in West City Farms. When I'm in town, I stay over there. I'm Jeffrey Abner. I'm going to do my problem. Yes. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lee Lockman, Washington. I'm in the old part of 2nd Avenue. Mr. Mack is actually my neighbor. I've been in the old part for 15 years now. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sumiko Hong, and I'm the community for Aggie Square, on the project on the UK data conference with Sunday Park. Sumika is also a good person to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. My name is Eric Soto. Uh, I currently rent property rates with my wife and I live in Hawaii. Hi, my name is Kim So. Rose, we have grown been here since 85, and this is sweet. Memory was Pat and I uh, were on the Oak Park Neighborhood Improvement Association in the 80s, in this room. So it's kind of crazy to be here. But now I live on 2nd and uh, right by Patrice, 33rd. Good evening, everyone. I'm here actually representing three organizations. <laughs> Sacklife Chamber of Commerce, Yay. right? Um, but also uh, Loyalty Riders. We are a group of black couple and compelled girls who have an interest in bringing youth in this neighborhood into the equestrian world. Mm -hmm. And my ties to this work, to this neighborhood, is being on the board for the best civil park at Building and Harm at today, where we hired 12 to 18 year olds to do beautification projects around the neighborhood, no cost to the homeowners, and the kids get work experience and mentors and and are busy in the summer and not going around with the little Oak Park babies. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, and then my day job is I'm the community engagement manager for the city of Sacramento. So definitely want to reach out to you so we can reach um, our Chinese and, and um, speaking residents as well. So we are always, my team is always available to come out and see updates. So if there's things you hear about or are interested, uh, let him know and me or my staff will come out and provide an update on it. So thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm your new city council member, and you'll hear from me in a minute. So. <laughs> um, I'm Gracie Phillips, Lavinia Phillips, um, Oak oh, Park Neighborhood Association board member, and I'm also um, an elected board member for Sacramento City Unified School District. You're the VP. Oh, yeah. and I'm the VP, first the vice VP. president, and there is my president over there. But I want to say to everybody in here this evening, leave your cards. Leave your information. You, there are so many resources in this room tonight. There is so much that we can do together. I really want to make sure that you all leave your print here tonight so that we can reach out to you again and make sure that you know we're doing what we can to help our neighborhood. So I, I truly appreciate that you're all here. I'm just glad to see you. Yeah. All right, everybody. Michael Blair. Hello. I've been in the neighborhood about 20 years. I'm on the board of uh, OPNA, and uh, thanks for coming out in the rain. Thank you. Let's go to Canope. Uh, yeah, you sat down. Oh, 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 we're, we're, we're doing intros. Canope, and I'm not going to do Just name, affiliation, where you are in the neighborhood. Okay, so my name is Canope, and I'm a volunteer in South Oak Park. I've uh, been here probably for about 30 years now, and uh, also a uh, local urban farmer. Um, and. Uh, Hi everyone, my name is Jocelyn Barrow. I'm the Deputy Director of Community Engagement in the Mayor's Office of Community Engagement. Um, I'm your neighbor in Midtown. Nice to meet you all. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Chima Rhodes. Uh, I'm with the Mayor's Office as well, Director of Community Engagement, overseeing the Mayor's Office of Community Engagement. Uh, also, I'm elected, uh, I'm President of the Sacramento Unified uh, School District uh, Board of Education. So, with Grace here. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is uh, Nino Boy Machado. Uh, I have a business owner of a close by at the brick store in Oak Park. And also, all city homes we use in the Beverly Hills State Road. Thank you. Dimitri. Hey guys, uh, make sure you're doing that with Jeff Thank you. Uh, Michael Benjamin, general uh, board member of Oak Park Labor Association. Uh, man, born and raised. Thank you all for coming out. This is, this is really huge. Thank you. Last but not least. Richard White was a dick. Uh, I live on 2nd 26th at this park, but I own property. Uh, well, thank you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's give ourselves a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.
this year. I think, like, let's start with 2023. Um, and then hear from other folks about what they want to see in the neighborhood. And, you know, hopefully this will be like a dialogue with, with our new council member. And, you know, we'll be working together, you know, this year and into the future. Awesome. Thanks yeah. so much for having me. Yeah. And I, do, I need just to this, but I do want to give a round of applause for the team over here at PNA. This is the. This
we don't we don't have public transit that goes to the places that we need to go. We don't have uh, transit that is coming on time, right? So people yeah. aren't using our buses, and our I think right now our ridership rate for Sacramento RT regional transit is about two percent or less. Uh, that's pretty bad, uh, and I think that that's another way that we can address climate change right now. So one of the biggest issues that I heard as I was going throughout uh, all the neighborhoods and talking to people for the last two years is that uh, we have really uh, poor rates of air quality, especially in places like a golf course here states, especially in places like Oak Park that are nearby the, the uh, conversions of the two freeways. We have really horrible air quality. I know Adrian's working on this with Valley Vision. Um, and one of the ways that we can help address that is getting more people off the road and into transit. So those are some big issues of mine. Homelessness, of course, uh, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. Um, I knocked on thousands of doors, talked to thousands of people the last few years during the, the campaign, and I can tell you without a doubt, the number one issue that's on everyone's mind in the city of Sacramento is homelessness. People are very concerned, uh, rightly so, um, because we do have a huge influx that has a 70% increase over the last few years, um, and we all know that because we see it. And so it's really important to me. Uh, part of my personal story is I left home when I was 16 and I slept in my car. I was homeless when I was younger. I put myself through school and, and was able to, to get out of it, but I understand that everyone's just a paycheck or two away. Um, we're all so much closer than we think. And so really having compassionate solutions, but making sure that we're doing it urgently. Um, and so I'm really committed to that as well. Um, so there's a lot of other issues that I care about, um, but I really want to talk with you. Um, and so I will open it up to questions or comments. Thank you. No, we don't give up. <laughs> And try, try to make sure everyone can hear. Okay. And we're all for feedback questions, too. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, you know, I've attended these Oak Park Neighborhood Association meetings off and on for, for some time prior to the pandemic. And one of the big concerns has been Aggie Square and how that's going to impact not just the vendors, but also the homeowners in Aggie Square. And one of my concerns, because I've seen this before, um, the development is imminent domain. You know, if, uh, if for whatever reason, you know, the University of California has a lot of power and they have rights in the domain. So how are we going to protect these property and their rights if the university decides to exercise the domain? So um, that's a really good question. So your question is, um, there's concerns about Aggie Square, um, and that can lead to displacement, especially if uh, the university might choose to do eminent domain, so therefore like take over land. So and we have someone from you know Aggie Square here who might be able to answer your more specific questions. But um, the city of Sacramento owns its land, um, so the, the UC Davis can't come in and eminent domain the city land. They have the land that they have, um, and they don't have power uh, to go out and, and get more land. They can purchase land. They can do all other things, but um, they can't go in and take it. Um, and so the city, local government, state, um, county, they can do that too, but that's a really, really long process and it's not used often at all. Um, and so I, if there's any sort of eminent domain issue that pops up, I'll be, I would happily share that with anyone um, and talk with it openly, but um, I'm not supportive of those types of efforts. Um, and so I hope that answers your question. Well, I'm, I'm an old tiger and I, I, I was around when UCD Med Center, and it's done a lot of good work, I'm not knocking it, okay? I was around where they expanded toward Broadway, and I went to Sac High, and I knew a family that lived in that area, and they, it's ugly to see the cops show up and force them to go something, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things I did see. Okay. Now, as far as I'm aware, there are no plans currently, but um, I certainly back in, in the 80s. In the 80s, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I know, um, and again, uh, if representative wants it's to share, but you know, agreed, yeah. Um, and so that's not something I'm going to be supportive of. Certainly, never want to right. get a lot of their comments for any reason. Um, never. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there are houses there all the way up to uh, Broadway. Yeah, you know. And I don't have a background on that. Close to it, you know. So thank you for that information. Yeah. Yes. So I don't have a background on that specific case, but I'd be happy to look into it. But um, from a big picture perspective, we have my commitment that I, I'm not supportive of eminent domain, especially people's homes. Um, and that if there is any kind of issue where we see, you know, land within a park being taken over or the proposal as such, I'll bring it to you first. There's never going to be something happening behind your back. Uh, I believe in transparency. It's really important to me. Um, even if that means it's harder, because it usually does make it harder, but that's good. Because I think a process that involves everyone's voices makes it better. Um, so that's my commitment. 
you. Um, but if anything else pops up, feel free to come in. All right. I think I saw you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, can you talk a little bit about um, how Measure O is being implemented in this Yes. So the question is, uh, can you talk about how Measure O is being implemented? And Measure O was the uh, it was on your ballot, and that was related to homelessness. So that basically said that uh, that there could be a city county partnership um, to basically force people off of the streets in a lot of cases and into help um, into spaces. Um, I did not support Measure O, not because I don't want people to get off the streets, but because Measure O did not provide for any housing, any shelter, uh, any, any services for people, so I didn't think it was a good option. Uh, but with that said, it did pass. Um, and so with that, the city and the county recently signed a partnership, a formal, uh, former formal uh, memorandum of offer, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm really tired today, MOU <laughs> of understanding. And basically what that says is the city and the county have to work together. Um, to put out teams of people into the encampments and to help them with the services. The challenge is this, and I'll just be really honest, we don't have enough places for people right now. It just is, it's true. Um, and that's a big frustration for me on the inside as I'm learning um, and talking to city staff and county staff is we just don't have enough places. We don't have enough vet shelter beds, we don't have enough housing, we don't have enough mental health resources for people, we don't have enough drug and alcohol um, and other addiction services for people. The county is working on those things and that was part of their commitment um, in the MOU. Uh, and then the city is also working on those things. So we've, we've opened up a couple of centers during the storm, including the Auburn Center and this street. But from a big picture perspective, I'll share, you, I'll share what I think is the path forward. Um, I think that we need to be operating at a much more regional level. Homelessness is not a city of Sacramento problem. Homelessness is not a county of Sacramento problem. It's not a state problem. It's, it's a problem that's happening all over the United States of America. And it's tied in part uh, to uh, a lack of affordable housing. We know that's one of the biggest driving factors. So when we saw the price of housing in Sacramento go up over the last three years, of course we saw a correlated uh, homelessness increase of 70%. There's also a lot of other factors involved with that. Um, but I want to model it after a program that already exists. It's just to the north of us. It's called the Sutter Yuba Homeless Consortium. And they have a formal partnership between two counties, five cities, school districts, nonprofits, small businesses, law enforcement, everyone. And they say, um, they do two really important things that we don't do here right now. They have a five-year strategic action plan. So they say, how many people are we trying to serve? We know that number in Sacramento, because we do what's called the point time count every year. So we've been able to calculate how many people are actually on the street. We know that there's, you know, it's not precise, but we know. Um, and then we've also done a survey with that to figure out what do they need? How many people need housing? How many people need shelter? How many people need drug and alcohol treatment? How many people need mental health care? And so on. Um, and so we need to do that here. We need, a, we need that action plan. We can't just operate in a piecemeal, reactionary way as we have been. Um, the second most important thing that they do is they pool all their funding together. So the reason why we haven't been successful here is because we're trying to do everything as a city, and our city manager has told us we're trying to go brain prep. We try to solve this problem. We do not have enough money to budget. Um, and so that's why it's really important that we bring together all of our partners, and cities, counties, everyone to help solve this problem. And so um, that's what I'm going to be pushing for while in office. We need a holistic solution. We can't keep operating in silos. Um, but with Metro, it is, it is moving forward. The Southern Yuba, so it's the Chicago Southern Yuba Homeless Consortium. And I can write that down too. I know I talk really fast just so that you can do it now. I'm okay, I'll try. <laughs> Has a question for Councilmember. You got four or five. <laughs> All right. I'm sure I spelled that out. And they, they do have a website. Uh, my question is concerning Aggie Square. Uh, prior to it being built, uh, there were agreements on workforce development and hiring, um, especially African American uh, youth. Uh, the uh, learn trades. And I wanted to find out if they have uh, followed up on that agreement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take over. You're not at all. Um, I haven't been briefed on the Aggie Square, yeah. so I, I know what I know from as an outside citizen, but please do share any information yeah. you have. A um, couple things. We are having a community meeting here at Oak Community Center the first Thursday in February. So we're happy to provide updates. We have shared with the city the general contractor's first report okay. showing the um, where the 
that are at with meeting those goals. So they have a whole bunch of goals about um, journey level, training people, and apprentices, and how many of their people can all get to each of those categories. Four zip codes in basic to the project, and then a larger group of eight zip codes in the Sacramento region. And then um, there are also targets and goals around how many um, regional members from the 10 counties closest to Sacramento are actually doing the work on the project. So there's a whole bunch of different numbers, um, but they are keeping track of that progress. And um, where they're not meeting the objectives and the, of the project, there's still a lot of time in the build because we have two more years of construction. There are specific um, action plans in place to help change the numbers and improve the access to the jobs. So at all times, our partners in the trades have been telling us that they're still actively taking apprentices in many of the programs um, and in many of the trades. So for people who are interested in gaining uh, employment or working in the trades, they might not actually end up at the IDS for a construction site because of the amount of time it takes to go through the apprenticeship and be ready to work on the job site. Um, but the, many of the trades and the building trades are still so please feel free to reach out to me and I can kind of do that and we'll play more Thank you, and I know it's kind of hard to hear for some folks. Um, so what we'll do is any folks can connect with you after. Yeah. Yep, I can score specific questions. Um, and then also, it sounds like you have a community meeting coming up in this room, right? Yep. Um, and what date is that? Uh, Thursday, February 9th. Thursday, February 9th at 6 o'clock? 5.30. At 5.30. So Thursday, February 9th at 5.30 in this room. Uh, you, you can hear from uh, DC Davis about Ivy Square um, if you have specific questions. And then I'm, I'm soon to be briefed on the topic, so sorry I don't, I don't have more in depth information. From the city side, um, if you give Michael Blair about two weeks, the city, he's getting ready to sign an agreement next week. We brought him on to really engage with our um, residents of color around workforce development. And so um, he's getting ready to go some training. And so talk, give him about two, three weeks. And people have all your workforce development um, information as well as financial um, health and entrepreneurs. And Conrad Trump as well. He's from Oak Park. He's also from the state. So, well, if you want to take a look at the second of the chart, why are we going to win and meet in a trust camp? Participation of the June fund. Within how people just put only the trust really, as they got it. Now, how have you looked at the constitution of the how the houses set up here? I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, what I'm saying is how they put it together that if you got two pieces of property, you have to say, well, you are in, you don't have to. What the what it's doing is taking over the rights of your property. Now, I just got a letter back in there pertaining to some of my people, how it was on the second avenue. But then they did not put it out with that. There's a clause in there that your parents or your kids don't have to be classified for you to pay that fee. What do they have for the money? What they have is. Oh, you mean the $40 um, tenant yeah. protection program fee? What? We want to know what does that pay for? That's a good question. Okay, so I will take note of that. And I, I know you also had questions around that too, around the tenant protection fee. So um, let's, if you, if you can send me an email, I'll happily connect with you. Do you want, um, if, you, if you will send me an email, do you want me to write no, down? No, no, email. We're trying to get an agenda now downtown. Yeah, I don't do it Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I don't know how to the word. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. I saw some other hands, but I might have missed them. Yeah, raise your hand high. I think there are some in the back that. that I feel like college So, um, on the homeless thing, before COVID, there was a city council meeting that I went to where they had all the tiny homeless on display. Where are we at with that? Are we going to go forward with that? Um, but that's also, not the also, I'd like to find out where we are with camp resolution. Are they going to be able to stay where they're at? Are they okay right now in this storm? And are we taking care of our homeless right now during this storm? Good question. Okay, questions around tiny homes and our camp resolution, which is uh, both are in separate areas in the city, um, but one is a, a large encampment for unhoused folks. Um, around camp resolution, so the resolution that was come to at the end of the 
that meeting was that um, they're going to allow that, that camp to stay. They are providing resources to the camp currently, so they give they get food and water distribution there. Um, and people are offered services on a regular basis. They don't. Okay, this is the information I have. I'm happy to get more info from folks. Um, yeah, and so ultimately, at the end of the day, because of Measure O, people may end up getting moved, um, and you know that, that's a legal requirement now by the city, unfortunately, and the county. Um, but you know, as you know, I'm really supportive of, of the Unhouse community and what can do to support them. One of the things that we've done in the last few days during the storm is try to work with the county to open up storm shelters and make sure people, we were able to get a deal with a staff RT that took about 10 hours <laughs> a couple of days ago where we got RT buses from City Hall to bring folks to storm shelters and respite. And then we do, we do have a, an agreement right now with a Sacramento RT where you can get anybody who wants to get on the storm or another ranch can get it on any bus any light rail station and find the Rainshare Respite Center for free. So uh, please do spread the word about that. We were able to shelter several folks over the last few days, um, but getting the word out has been one of the biggest challenges. We also did several water rescues on New Year's Eve night for folks that were caught up in the storm on the American River Parkway. Um, so if you do have any issues at all, you know folks that are um, getting rained out, that are in a camp that may be unsafe, whatever it may be, um, Please do contact my office. You can also call 311. It's the best way to get help quickly. If you're in an emergency, always call 911. Okay. Um, and then your other question was around tiny homes. That has been put on hold. Um, that was during uh, the former council member um, when he was in office. And it's not, it's not in the district of the guns uh, down the road. But I think it's been put on hold because they've got a lot of community opposition, unfortunately. And that's, by the way, one of the biggest challenges that we have as the city and as the county to open up shelters and housing and especially affordable and low-income housing is um, we do get a lot of people who come out and oppose projects. It makes it very difficult for us to actually open up the stuff that we need. Um, so one of my commitments is, you know, I, I, I recognize that people have concerns. I will always work with the community, talk with them, ensure that I hear your concerns and try to address them. But I do support affordable and low-income housing. And so it's, you know, if it's a good project, I will be supporting it. All right. I guess I'll Couple of questions. I failed to say I am your South Sacramento Sheriff's Commissioner, and I cover South Sacramento, the whole corridor coming down Stockton Boulevard to Florence on up. And uh, we're working on community engagement. What can be done better? What they need to do better? And I'm a real aggressive advocate on outreach to the community. We cannot do it by ourselves. People got to get involved and see what it takes. That's one question. The next question I have is businesses. We know as a fact there's a homeless problem. No shadow of a doubt. Personally, I worked to get food for less on Franklin and Matt Road when it was an old radius. And I'm still working with them. Their concern with other businesses is they're not being heard. And my phone rings and what upsets me is when I follow the steps and I tell them to call 311 or whatever they need to do, and my phone rings. Well, Chris, I called this. Nobody's returning my call from that. Nobody's returning my call from the council office. What do I do? So I get up. I walk with those businesses. I just met with them. When I have to sit and listen, we may have to raise prices to do this because we're missing 58 carts. Each cart costs $335. I work with SAC PD, their neighbors suggest this. Recovered 11 carts on one encampment, 22 carts on another encampment, 9 on one more cart. <coughs> they retrieved those carts are still more missing. Each cart is $365. When they have to put the system on the bottom of it, that's up to $800 to $1,200. So when they do their budget right now, they're looking at $35,000 in cart maintenance. So when they can't recoup that, where does it go? It goes to the customer. So my goal is, like I said, I've been living in South Sacramento for 30 years, and I'm not saying this to criticize no one, but when I wake up in the morning, I feel like that's my district. Because when I exercise and walk that district, the businesses know me more than they know the councilmen. They follow me, they talk to me, they say what they problem with. I can call Zach P and say, you need to get out of here and fix this problem. They get out and fix it. But when they call their council, nothing's getting done. That's what we need to fix, is start listening to our businesses. We know there's a homeless problem. The businesses know there's a homeless problem. But we're leaving our businesses on the back burner. 
and they, they're the soul of our community. I just met with some of them. Some of them are shut the doors at 5 o'clock. Walgreens is on the chopping block to shut that store on Franklin and Mac. They just haven't made that decision yet because coming in the store doing that, they can't get no help. They may shut it. Food for Less, we're working on security issues there. This one up here, we're working on security issues. Theft is at a high rate. It's out doing the, the sales per associate that they hire. So there's got to be some changes. There's got to be some changes. I'd love to meet with you and figure out what some specific recommendations you have are. And I'd love to meet with your client as well, yeah. with Nicholas and others. Um, as you know, I just started about three weeks ago. I haven't received any calls from businesses about that, but I, I, I do have an open door. Um, we, as I mentioned, our, our phone lines are open, our emails are open, and um, responding to people quickly is, is a, a very high importance to me. Oh, so yeah. I look forward to, to working with you um, and love to meet and, and figure out some of those recommendations. As some know me, I'm very aggressive. And I can take hits. I'm like, if you don't like me, that, that's good with me. That just lets me know I'm doing a good job. Um, <laughs> I have a question. I have a question that's kind of related to food access. Okay. Um, so, as you know, we uh, actually, the founder of Oak Park Neighborhood Association is a woman named Joni Titherington. She's also the founder of something called the Oak Park Farmers Market. And those of you who have been here for a few years know about this awesome farmers market in McClatchy Park with local food, local vendors. Uh, EBT and CalFresh processing and market match. Um, there was, we don't know if we're going to have a market, to put it short, we don't know if we're going to have a market this year. Um, I don't know what the situation is. I don't know what conversations are being had. I know the OPA was very important in the formation of the Oak Park Farmers Market back in the day, you know, 12, 13 years ago. Um, but I want to make sure we we're still offering, you know, access to food for low income folks in the neighborhood. Um, so, kind of curious about conversations you're having or vision you might have around that. And then, I think related to that, you know, our food bank, the Sacramento Food Bank and Family Services Campus in Oak Park, right there on 3rd and 34th, is also being sold. Um, and doesn't necessarily mean that they're, you know, they haven't provided food out of that site on non-Thanksgiving days for 10 years. Um, so it's not a, you know, day-to-day -day food bank, but it's still a, a, a facility, you know, a service center in the community. So. I'm kind of curious about your vision for food access between the farmer's market and the food bank buildings. Really good questions. Um, and so, first of all, all farmer's market will start there. That's that's priority number one in my office right now um, because luckily um, we do have some funds set aside at the state level thanks to our assembly member um, to get the farmer's market back up and running. Um, unfortunately, uh, the, the former um, organization that was running the farmer's market shut it down. I'm not sure if they're coming but we do want to, we're actively seeking organizations right now um, that have experience and would like to, and would be interested in running the farmer's market. We do have some funds to help with startup. We do not have funds to, for ongoing costs. It has to be someone who's interested in helping getting that money on an ongoing basis. I'm also happy to help with that. Um, but we do have some funds for startup, so we're excited. Um, based on our timeline, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get it open by the certain time, but I will have more information with you for you once we all sit down and figure out a game plan. Um, and we're bringing everyone in, that includes OPNA and everyone, uh, to make sure that we have a farmer's market that works for everyone. Uh, we do want, I do want to make sure that it comes back on the day that works best for people, too. I know that the date moving was a huge issue, um, and that really just kind of killed the market in a lot of people's perspective. And so um, so that's, a, that's an open question, but we're working on it uh, day one. That's a huge priority. Um, and just food access in general, as you know. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, that food access is one of the biggest problems that we have in the city of Sacramento and the region. Um, and so I'm really interested in also finding a way that someone said urban farming in the back, how we can work with our urban farming partners all over the city and a park to, to bring resources in as well. Um, and so please do reach out to us if you have leads on organizations or people that would be interested in running the farmer's market. We're also going to do an outreach effort um, as well. And so that's farmer's market. The second one that you had. Food bank. Building. Food bank. Okay. So the food bank building, um, as you may know, that went up for sale. So the Sacramento Food Bank had put up for sale. They couldn't uh, bear the cost any longer. They're consolidating their operations in the north area. That's a, that's a huge loss for Oak Park, but unfortunately we can't control the operations of the organization. Um, so because that was put on the private market, um, that it will, it looks like it's an escrow. I cannot share at this point who it's an escrow with because that's private information, but as soon as I can share it, I will uh, if it does go through. Um, so that's the update that I have on the food bank building, and, you know, and hopefully I'll be able to have something to share with you very soon on that. Food access. The city just um, 
committed a million dollars into yeah. um, food access, and Tim might have some more information, but a number of organizations and uh, churches um, receive funding. If you go to the city of Sacramento's website and you just put in food justice, there's a list of all of the organizations and the amounts that they receive. Um, so there's a lot of organizations that I'm sure you guys would be familiar with that receive some of the million dollars. And then we, we keep that list of the so that it's in the mm -hmm. uh, every month. And whoever doesn't have an email address to look at, that's our fellow council. We can connect afterwards and we should get that information. Awesome. That's really good information. Thank you for sharing that. I believe there's a problem with neighbor works because they suck out quite a bit of the money for different things. Uh, they used to uh, be the people that supervised a grant from, I think it was the federal government or whatever, and everything had to be typed out if, if uh, it was for police. Oh, well, they need a, a, a patch kit. It, talk, it took more money to put down so that they needed to catch it than it was worth. They, they, they milk it. You, you know, it's, it feeds on it itself. Yeah, I know. And I know, you know, I used to work in the nonprofit space, so I know it's really hard. Uh, everybody's always competing for grants, and then when you get grants, it's really hard to maintain them because of the reporting requirements and all kinds of other stuff. So I hear you on that. Um, luckily, uh, the funding that we have coming down, there will be reporting requirements associated with it because it's public funds, of course. Um, but I think we'll have more flexibility with the state funds that we have available to restart the market. Um, so hopefully we won't have the same issues. And keep neighbor works away. I'm not familiar with the, the backstory of back issues with neighbor works, but we're, we're looking forward to a new future.
guys the Parker reason is that if you still had a couple walking from getting hit by a car uh, back in September. Um, I've always been an advocate of cycling and that you that obviously like makes a good lot of sales. Um, and I've noticed just in September I've seen like a minimum of three different cyclists still in the area, exactly headlines, similar number of pedestrians. Um, just in terms of like, you know, pointing parents to walk the kids to the bus stop, take the bus, the road to that dangerous lane.
We're going to work really hard to make sure that we can keep people in their homes first and foremost and help people access housing and make sure we have more affordable housing for them here. I just wanted to echo um, the gentleman's comment in the back and maybe encourage um, the council to just revisit the existing policies on the streets and like making them safer. Because I actually did file a complaint with just my street and my um, because people frequently speed and they told me that that area had already been surveyed and they've essentially done all they can. Um, so like I'm glad to hear that Stockton and Broadway are being revamped for the decision for them, but like in terms of residential areas where like we walk our dogs. We run and like we exist day to day. Um, I kind of like to start to hear that like it is what it is, and that's how the street will be. Um, so yeah, if someone could revisit that zone. No, that's really good. And we're actually neighbors. We live on the same street, <laughs> and and she's one hundred percent right. Um, the speeding in residential areas is a huge, huge problem too. People we'll running stop signs too. That that stop sign on Ninth and Thirty Third. I watch people blow it all day long, literally. Um, and so, you know, part of that, you know, is a challenge because we don't necessarily want to bring in more enforcement, right? Like, um, but we do want to make sure that we create a space where people are actually like obeying stop signs and not speeding on the roads. And we actually have um, speed bumps on it, which is yeah, something that absolutely. a lot of streets don't have. Um, there's, so this is a fun fact, something that I learned new in office. Um, there's actually a speed bump request log at the city of Sacramento, and each council member only gets a certain number of speed bumps. Uh, each year that they can put in in their in their district, and the lo I can tell you the log is really really long, um, and so that's one of the challenges that we have with things like that. But what I'm really interested in is um, are there are there lower and I said this on our call about the intersection. Are there lower cost things that we can do in the short term while we wait for the long term options uh, that can help slow things down? And so one of the things that I saw um, and I sent an article to the city on this too that they do in some other countries and some other states is they use public art as a way to slow traffic. So literally painting on the ground, uh, is they, uh, they paint these murals that basically make it look like there's holes in the ground or that there's you know, stairs and it literally makes people slow down because they're like, what's that? Uh, and you know, that's a pretty low cost, comparatively low cost thing that you could do. Um, they do this in Europe a lot, so I find it really interesting. So I'm always open to ideas. I don't think I know everything, but I, I know I don't know everything. And I need, um, I need everybody's input. So I would always welcome if you have ideas, specific ideas, especially please do send them my way. If it's something that's uh, really concrete, we can probably get it done. So, so what's the next well, process? So, so let's, let's close it out with uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I want the, the, the final question about Paul. Yeah, what's the, what's the next process? So we did all of this, and maybe you'll have our concerns. So what does it look like in the next few months? So, my, so I guess this at the top. So what I'm going to do next is actually do like a listening session for So uh, this has been a meet and greet, and I want to make sure you guys knew who I was, and um, get, get a little more information on us in the office. Um, but what I want to do is some really in-depth listening sessions. So us going, me not saying anything, and listening to the community, and making sure that I have all of your input. I don't even have notes here. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, because um, I'm so new, I don't have that. I also don't have to, to do that. Um, so uh, what we're going to do next is do listening sessions. Really listen to everyone, make sure we log everything, and then make sure that we're following up with people on this Please do. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Thank you. And this is going to be recorded, so, yeah. so hopefully, you know, we'll capture the conversation effectively. Um, and you all can revisit this conversation on YouTube. Awesome. I think I asked my students from the camera earlier. <laughs> so, um, so with that, do um, you have any sort of final comment before we transition? Just please make sure that you, if you write down email address and the phone number, I'm available to you always. Um, do not think any concern is too big, too small. Um, we will work together to get things done. And I will also be really transparent with you. If, you know, if I can't get it done right away, I'll let you know. Um, there are challenges and barriers, I'll let you know. But um, I think we can do a lot as a community, and I'm really looking forward to working with you. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, council member. So this is the part of the meeting where we go into announcements. So if we're working on cool things that we want to share with the community, um, this is our opportunity. And I have to, I couldn't help but notice, there's a lot of people in our audience wearing blue, who may or may not have hats on, and I want to know what this is all about. Do you guys know who you're all and you are rolling to this meeting? I don't know what's up. So, okay. so I know who is sort of your, do you have a spokesperson? Are you going to do a song and dance for us? <laughs> what should we know? So I am proud to introduce the Loyalty Riders, a black cowboy and cowgirls uh, local club here in the area. And we have uh, an intense interest in furthering with their relationship with horses, just understanding the 
Western world or care, um, everybody's pretty much aware of like kind of the therapeutic side of equine therapy and those kinds of things. And so we just feel like for kids to get to see themselves on horses and normalize that and um, have outlets and have things to go. These are a great group of folks. Don't let the hat fool you. They are out there. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I was too long. And uh, before we go, my 
example, I'm going to do a quick one. We're going to like see our OPA ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're doing a really cool, you might have checked this out. This is actually my video. Uh, but we're doing a really cool air quality monitoring project uh, in Oak Park. We've actually deployed a network of 10 air quality sensors that are solar powered on buildings in north, central, and south of Oak Park. The idea is to try to see where pollution comes from. Um, we actually, if you look at this map, the high numbers where the pollution hotspots are, we're seeing south of the park, mm -hmm. is unfortunately where the pollution hotspots are. Uh, particularly around Oak Ridge Elementary, Fruit Ridge Community Collaborative. So, uh, and there's other hotspots that you'll see on this map in other parts of Oak Park. So the idea is, if we can identify hotspots, we can get money from the state to create programs to address some of these environmental justice issues that we're seeing in the neighborhood. So, again, if you're interested in chatting about this with me, come, come say hi or pick up one of these. But we have a couple of you are, are on our, our community steering committee helping us move that work forward and just uh, hope that folks at least know that there's this resource and it actually is a live air quality monitor. You can check air quality every hour of every day um, via our portal. So again, if you want to know hyper local air quality in the neighborhood, check that out. So then we'll do my All right, real quick. These are medical disposable protective coveralls. So my organization, the Imprint Innovation, got a donation of about 100 of these. I wanted your help to get these to the homes. Um, it's um, raining outside, the weather's bad, on this picture. That's a full coverall suit, all the way up to a hood and everything, to try to protect them and, and keep them warm and safe. So if you have interest, I'm going to put my number up on the board, give me a call. And uh, by tomorrow, I'm going to have about 100 of these. Give me a call, I'll get you some, and we can get them out together. So I'm going to put my number up here. Well, don't call me about my pay stuff. Thanks. Let's go to that. Hi, everyone. Um, our organization is Casa de Brazilian Folkloric Arts. And uh, so on Saturdays at 1030, uh, we're offering three Brazilian Capoeira Angola classes here um, for Oak Park residents. Um, you learn the music and movement by a Brazilian master. Um, of capoeira. Um, for, you, for you guys that don't know, capoeira is an art that's a self-defense disguise of dance, music, and game. And it has a long history in Brazil. And so we teach a lot of the culture and music and the movement. And so there's no um, age limit to start. So you can start at 10 years old all the way up to 75. You have Brazilian masters that are 85 years old. Um, so everyone is welcome. Um, and we hope you to see you on Saturdays at 10.30. Yeah. I'm going to represent my South Sacramento community since I see I'm the only one here. I don't know. Okay, what we're having now, we're going to have a quick quack. Yes. A Dutch Brothers on Franklin and Mac, Jason for the West. I've been working with them over a year to bring that. And I want to make sure they hire from the community. I want to make sure you hire correctional folks that was currently incarcerated that sit on the board for a correctional reentry program that I run in South Sacramento. I'm going to talk to the developer and we're working through a plan. We're going to hire from the community. I don't want you bringing folks from San Francisco and Fremont. We want to hire from within that community. The reason I'm fighting for it is if you look at the plans, it's going to look like you're getting off the freeway in Roseville. The way you're doing it. It's going to look like a Roseville Galleria. And that's something South Sacramento hasn't had for many years. It's going to look beautiful. They're going to redo all the buildings, the back of it. It's going to look nice. So I'm fighting for it. I'm going to hire school kids, all of that. Back South Sacramento. All right. All right. January 14th at David Woods. We'll have a meeting February 3rd, I believe, here during the day. Um, if you Google African American Experience Project, the city is looking to document the African American experience and also collect oral stories. We have uh, students that can go out and collect stories from our elders. So there's the historic context piece and then there's the oral history piece. So please uh, reach out. Um, OPNA will send it out, um, all of the information, but please make sure that you tell your story because if not, somebody else will tell it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, uh, my announcement is that on January 21st, we're going to be having a mural painting at Father T.P. Kenny. Um, we'll be working, the district will be working with, uh, 
But more important than wide open walls is locating artists from the outer area. Um, so I've been charged with trying to locate money, which means that uh, maybe your work business association, who is not here tonight, would be someone to talk to. I don't think they're here, but um, it's really important for our kids to see who they are, just like on, on horse, horseback riding. That is so important for them to say, to see, I am also a part of this. Um, so even if you want to just come out and support, maybe jump in the jump house, whatever, we're going to be out there at 10 o'clock on the 21st. Um, parking, I believe, is on the street as well. So um, I know we got one QP kid, I think she's already left, but um, very important to come out and support our kids as much as you can. Thanks. Awesome. And, uh, uh, one thing that we're also doing at OPNA is where we have a couple other murals kind of in the mix. Um, so we've been working with Caltrain, and I'll let Michael talk about one of them down at 21st Avenue. Uh, we're also, so the second Avenue Highway 99 underpass will also get a 45 grand um, to do a mural. And we uh, have actually identified a uh, local South Sacramento artist. You know, we got to pay our artists for their, for their labor. Um, and Shona McDaniels uh, and Jose Lott are going to be the two artists that are going to be um, building that mural. Um, it's an absolutely massive space. It is an absolute, that underpass is enormous uh, with multiple services. Um, so there's going to be a fair amount of engagement of Oak Park residents and others, and Curtis Park too, because it's kind of shared, right? Um, in terms of envisioning what that mural is going to look like. There's currently a survey out. If you get my emails, if you, if you don't get my emails, leave your email address. Um, if you get the OPNA emails, um, you know, the answer. So share your vision for the second avenue being the underpass mural. Then there's also a 21st avenue underpass mural. Yes, yeah, so on 21st, um, it's about the same size, so it's huge, two walls both sides. And the artist is, if you've been over to the Guild Theater on the uh, side where there's the, the woman with the Oak Park on her shirt, that was done by Jaya King. And she's going to be the artist to do the one on 21st. Nice. So she and uh, Yuri, I can't remember Yuri's last name, but they're teaming up together to make it happen. So be looking for notices because we want something nice to go up there. But, and it's, and it's already, the designs have already been selected because we had a couple of listening sessions and whatnot. But more importantly, we want the actual residents to participate and be part of this because it's something that we want folks to be proud of. We want you to bring your families out so they can paint the wall, help out. And then when they're you know driving or walking up and down the street through the uh, uh, through the tunnels, then they feel like, hey, this is us, this is our our home, we live here, and really have some pride in it. So we really want that participation. So um, probably I think by matter of fact January we're going to start plotting it out, and I think it's going to probably the painting will probably start happening around March. So just be on the lookout. So Michael Benjamin has a, a number of things related to the Oak Park Neighbor. Uh, just community members and things like that to keep this afloat. 
to this day he's given 18,600 bucks in and out of OPA to residents. Right? Yeah. So, the one thing about the Residents Association I will tell you is we are strong on calls to action. We're not an ad hoc committee. Okay, committee. We don't do that, right? We really, we really try to uh, do the work. And so, um, we're proud of this. We want you all to get involved. We can grow this out, right, to where we can help and support more people. So um, that's Oak Park Cares. Make sure you all check that out. I think you covered it. Yeah. Let's give Mike a shout out. Yeah. Awesome. And I think Darnell. Where's Darnell's habitat? Fire. There you go. And this is a preview of our potentially preview of our next meeting. Uh, you know, with the only with Darnell Guma and the meeting partners that manage the habitat from the management So, so to the Oak Park residents, thank you for allowing me to join in on your meeting today. Uh, I just want to make an announcement. Uh, Rock the Block <coughs> is going to be taking place um, this year, May 5th and 6th. So prepare for that. And then, so uh, applications will be available next month. And we're looking to do 25 to 30 home repairs. So if you have any issues or any repairs you need for your home, get those applications in as soon as possible. Look out for those applications. I'll be in the neighborhood from today until the rest of the year um, on the ground. Um, <coughs> Share the good news. So get those in. Um, I would say mid February. Look for those. Um, so those, there are, if you're not familiar with Rock the Block, it's a two day event that brings together 600 volunteers over the two days. Um, our host site for the event is St. Paul Baptist Church. Um, we do no cost repairs, which range from building fences, <coughs> landscaping, exterior paint. Um, this year we're possibly looking into doing some interior repairs. Um, we're still waiting to see what that looks like. Um, and window uh, upgrade, energy efficient upgrade, um, partnering with SMUS, we're also doing um, roofing, um, solar panels, EV plugs as well. Um, so all that information is over on our website at uh, habitatgreatersac.org and can also be available on the supplier um, coming out pretty soon. So yeah, just wanted to mention that. Thank you. So yeah, May 5th and 6th. Oh, one more thing. So in addition to Rock the Block and the home repairs, we also do community projects, community investment projects. So I'm um, working with Adrian and OPNA to kind of create a survey that we hope to share with all of you to give us an insight on what community investment projects you guys um, want in your neighborhood so that we can invest in that and help help support that. Thanks. That's a that's a good place to strategy. You know, helping helping folks stay in their homes, helping people get you know the repairs that they need that may, maybe they can't afford. That's an anti displacement strategy. Okay, it's an anti gentrification strategy. Um, so thanks, Pat. What other announcements do folks have before we call? Go ahead. Um, hi, Cindy Go Home again. Um, if you would like to sign up for the Aggie Square newsletter, which is once a month, um, an electronic newsletter that comes to your email inbox, um, I'll take your name and address, the email address, and be happy to add you to that. Um, we announce all of our regular meetings there, and we try and share community-based information there also. So we'd love to add you to our mailing list. Um, a couple of things that we carried in recent newsletters that might be of interest. A really popular program that our UC Davis uh, health system does called the Mini Medical School, which is about healthy aging, is um, starting up in February. And it's like um, two and a half hours on three or four consecutive uh, Saturday mornings in February. Um, and it's about healthy aging, and there's um, medical experts and doctors and health providers there to give information about healthy aging strategies and, and maintaining a healthy and active lifestyle and living independently. So if you or family members are interested, it's going to take place online, um, so anybody can access it through Zoom, and um, it's a great opportunity, really popular program. Um, again, our community engagement meeting is Thursday, February 9th, it will be here. Um, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. We'll give a general overview of um, kind of the update on Aggie Square and our accomplishments towards the Community Benefits Partnership <coughs> And these meetings are co-hosted with us and the City of Sacramento and the developer, Waxfield Science and Technology. So we'll hope, we hope you'll be able to come to that. And then finally, um, a program that is um, available for low-income and undocumented college students at Sac City College UC Davis or Sac State is um, enrolling its second group of students and it's a service learning program that offers $10,000 
to students who want to do community service and service learning. So if you're enrolled at Sac City College as a full-time student, or UC Davis or Sac State, um, and you're low income or undocumented student, you can earn up to $10,000 in doing a service learning project for next year. And also, we're uh, currently accepting applications from nonprofit organizations that would be willing to host two or more students. And it's subject areas where they need uh, community nonprofits to um, host students is in the sectors of climate action and food insecurity. So if you have interest or know of a community organization that might want to host a couple of students next academic year, starting in August or September through May or June of 2024, um, please come see me afterwards and I'll share all the information I have about those two. Thanks. Thanks, Nico. Uh, another thing that is rather exciting, I think, for OPNA is that we have a new partnership with SMUD, and we're excited to have uh, SMUD Director Rosanna Herber with us today. Um, but we're doing outreach about several SMUD programs. We're all SMUD customers who live in Oak Park. Um, but they have, uh, folks don't know this, they have a low income program and a low income rate. So if you qualify, that SMUD building can sometimes get a little high in the summer, will be lower for you if you do qualify. Um, there's also a lot of things you can do, a lot of rebates and programs that you can take advantage of to harden your home and improve your home and improve its efficiency. Um, so there's a ton of things. Just you know, go to their website and get a, you know, a discounted uh, Pump water here, which is super efficient, HVAC upgrade, and, um, and I'm sure you know we should have a SMUD person come, come around, sit around, and later talk about this stuff. So appreciate our partnership with SMUD. A couple of other things that OPA is looking to do in the new year. So some of you might have come to our big party on August 13th, oh, celebrate Oak Park. We had a thousand people in Apache Park. We fed everybody. We had games. We had an electric vehicle ride and drive, so you could go test drive an electric vehicle without the salesperson. Um, so that was really cool. Um, so we're going to be doing that again sometime this year. Um, and it's going to be a big party celebrating the neighborhood. Uh, we're really excited. Um, and really last but not least, um, what's that? So, so we're looking for, we're always looking for new board members. Uh, we're always looking for new board members. There's six of us and we're all volunteers. Um, so, you know, the more the merrier. <laughs> you get retired. <laughs> As Gracie said, so um, we do have, we're a nonprofit. We are an independent nonprofit, so you'd actually be like, it's kind of important to be a board member, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we have bylaws and stuff, and, and, and we say that you have to come to three of these meetings to qualify as a board member. So you guys are one down, and maybe some of you can more, um, but three meetings, and you can qualify to be a board member. We're looking for, we need some board members. So if you feel like getting involved more deeply, that's a really good it's not going to get you any money, but uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. So. And so before we call it, you know, our, yeah. next, our next meeting is going to be on the first Thursday of February. So it'll be February 2nd at 6 p.m. February 2nd at 6 p.m. 5 30, we'll have a different local restaurant catering. Okay. Um, so, what we, uh, so one thing, question I kind of want to ask you guys is about room layout for the next meeting. Is this good? Do we want tables? Do we want something? Else? Do we want circle? Do we want yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's try it. You know, it's like if it doesn't work, we won't do it again. So. <laughs> All right. Well, that was that was kind of the, the thing I wanted to do. So this will be a different setup, but it will be again be the first Thursday um, of February. Um, and then the last last thing I guess is like we always accept donations. So if you're interested in, you can't, you know, don't have time to volunteer. If you've got a boatload of money, you're trying to give away to a local group. Um, you know, we do take donations. You can go to oakparkna.com uh, to donate through PayPal. Or if someone has a hat, what we used to do at the old. Well, we've got several hats in here. <laughs> Thank you.